Hello, this is John Brewer, and today we're going to be looking at light speed communication mechanics in Slower Than Light. For today's demonstration, I'm actually going to be using a previous branch of STL's development. This is actually a study I did a few years back to originally establish whether the concepts were practical or possible. I took a week off of work in October of 2011 and built this demo. Uh, the artwork here is from NASA for the splash screen. Everything else is from the multi-talented Craig Perko, whom you can find at projectperko.blogspot.com. Okay, so opening the demo drops us straight into the galaxy map. In this version of Slower Than Light, star systems were the lowest level locations in the game. Double clicking on the home world will get us to the mission creator, which allows us to build spaceships. One of the biggest differences between Slower Than Light and other 4X games is that ships aren't assigned orders at the very low move here, move there, do this, do that level. Actions are mission oriented. Missions are multi-step orders that ships execute. In this demo, ships can only be assigned one mission when they are created, so designing and creating missions, uh, or designing ships and creating missions are on the same screen. But in the, uh, in the release game, new missions can be transmitted to existing ships either to interrupt them, update them, or completely retask them. The first thing that we need to do is assign a destination. So I'm going to take a quick look back at the map here, see what the closest... Okay, Ophiuchus is the nearest star system, so that's where I'm going to be dropping my first colony. Okay, I'm going to call this the Ophicus Colony. Okay, now there are only a few options in this demo for what components you can have. You can have antimatter rockets or you can have fusion rockets. For this colony ship, I'm going to use antimatter rockets. And I'm going to use cryo bays for my colonists. I'm going to put about 300 colonists on this mission. Uh, let's see. Ophucus is about 11.9, so 12 light years away. That's almost actually almost exactly Tau Ceti's distance. So, I'm also going to add a little bit of antimatter fuel here in the form of an antimatter containment system. And here's the mission profile down here. Now the default mission that's given to all ships uh, is the assumption that ships are colony ships. At mission year zero, i.e. immediately, the ship activates its engine, sets its goal velocity to 1% of the speed of light. Then when it's one-tenth of a light year out from its destination, it starts decelerating to one-hundredth the speed of light, then to one-hundred-thousandth the speed of light, and then finally when it's about 10 million kilometers or 0 0.0000001 light years from its destination, it stops and it colonizes. So I'm going to try running the simulation with the default mission and the couple of uh, components I have slapped down immediately. Now the simulation, you know, is running at 1000x here. I can up it to 10,000x. And this is saying, simulation complete, I will establish my colony on day 496,907, uh, which is great. But one thing you might have noticed here is this bar here indicates the fuel reserves on the spaceship. And even once I get all the way to the uh, destination star system, yeah, I had a lot of fuel on board. So that means I'm not going fast enough. So I'm going to try upping this to one-tenth the speed of light. Run the simulation again. Okay, and there, three years in, I am out of fuel. So I'm going to try adding a little bit of fuel to this mission. Okay, simulation complete. We overshot the target, which means we didn't have enough thrust to stop in the distance that we gave ourselves. So I'm going to increase the distance at which we start decelerating to 0.2 light years. There we have a fuel exhaustion. So add a little more fuel. And there we go. Simulation complete. Colony established on day 96,347, which is much better than a half a million days. So I'm going to call this my 
sort of base colony ship. I'm going to save the template. Save there. And I'm going to approve the mission. Now when I approve the mission, the homeworld is going to build the spaceship. It's going to take 1,862 days to build the ship. Then I'm going to close this and I'm going to start running time forward. Now in this demo I hit spacebar to start running time forward. You can see it advancing there. And I hit plus and minus to increase the rate at which time passes. Okay so there we go. 1st January 3112 a new ship or the colony ship has made contact with us. Now what does the colony ship do? Uh, the colony ship is going to be executing the mission that we gave it and every 10 years it's going to send a status report back to the homeworld. Now here you can see the ship's uh, rendering here, its name, and 3.13 years ago. Now that 3.13 years ago is the time since that ship last sent a status report to the homeworld. Now if we watch time roll forward here, we'll get up to about 11 years and then drops back down to 1. That's because every 11 years, or every 10 years rather, the ship sends a status report back to the homeworld with its position and velocity. Now when it sends out its first status report after leaving, it's about a light year out, so it takes one year for that report to get back to the homeworld, which means that when my display gets updated, the report's already a year old. That's why the number drops down to one instead of dropping down to zero. So there it just dropped down again, and now it'll drop down again. Well, it's hard to see now that it's being uh, obscured by the destination star there. We're just going to let it keep going out there. And what's going to happen? Now you'll notice at this point, our report is about 71 years old. Now why is it 71 years old when this star is only 11 light years away and we're getting reports every 10 years? Theoretically that should never go past about 22 years. Well the reason is that the ship has gotten far enough away that the transceiver, or the transmitter rather, on the ship no longer has enough power to reach homeworld. So here you have homeworld power. Our receiver can receive about 0 0.04 sensitivity. Now the fact that we're not receiving uh, information from the colony ship indicates that when it sends a transmission, its strength will drop below 0 0.04 by the time it reaches us. So again, the map here is just plotting the position of the colony ship where it thinks the colony ship is based again on its last reported location and velocity. Now in this demo this is pure dead reckoning. In the release version of STL the map is a little smarter about estimating okay the ship probably followed its mission so it probably stopped here and there's probably now a colony on that planet we just can't communicate with it. But in this demo it just says, well, I didn't hear from them, so they must have just flown right past the, uh, the destination star system and off into the void. So this ship should have reached there a while ago. There should be a colony there. Oh, and there it is. Okay, so the colony was established. It has a strong enough transmitter to send to the homeworld. It has a strong enough receiver to receive from the homeworld. So we can just talk to these guys directly. Great. That is the way it should work. Now let's go find another place to send a colony to. Beta Kytos. Now let's send a colony mission from Homeworld to Beta Kytos. Beaten Kytos. I'm going to name that. I'm just going to use the template from before run the simulation to make sure that it still works. Okay, there we go. So we can approve this mission. And we'll run the clock forward. Okay, there's the Beta Kytos colony ship. 
Now the colony ship is heading out. Now it's at the point where uh, we can no longer see it from Homeworld, but we're actually getting status reports relayed through our colony here. So the colony ship can't reach us, but it can reach our colony, and our colony will send it on to us, which is why it's only 16 years since we got our last status report. Okay, but it looks like now that colony ship has passed out of range of even our colony here. Which is a pity. Okay, it reaches Beta Kaitos. Now, we won't know whether or not it succeeded in its mission there. So what we want to do is we're going to want to establish a relay. Now, what I'm doing, in case you missed it, is I'm actually looking at our colony here, and I'm going to tell them to create a new relay. Now, what a relay is, is it's a ship with a transponder on it. And what a transponder is, is it's a transmitter and a receiver combination. Yep, let's put an antimatter rocket on this and a hundred tons of fuel because we're going to want it to get out there pretty quick. Now there are three types of transceivers. Um, we're going to use the most powerful one, the transceiver 15. That means it has 15 transmission strength from where it goes to. Now we look at our colony. Our colony has a receiver strength of 0 0.06. So if we divide 15 strength or uh, 15 transmission power by 0 0.06 we take the square root of that we can determine that this that uh, our colony will be able to pick up this relay from about 15 light years away now this isn't going to be a colony mission so we're going to delete all of the uh, rules here except for the at mission start start moving we're going to tell them start going at like a quarter the speed of light then add a new trigger it says at distance from origin so we're going to say at a distance of say 14 light years i want you to set your goal velocity to zero which is to say stop now that gives them a light year to stop We're going to run this simulation. Okay, it's going to take them about 20,000 days for the relay to get into position. And now hopefully that relay will be able to pick up transmissions from the colony on Beta Kaitos, relay them back to our colony here, which will then relay them back to the homeworld. Okay, I'm going to save this as a relay ship. Now we see that this ship is going to take 560 days to build. Uh, 560 days is what, a uh, year and a half? So what's going to happen is when I approve this mission, the current date is October of 3749. It was probably September when I actually sent the mission. So it's going to take 11.9 years for the order to get to our colony. Our colony is going to take a year and a half to build the ship. And then it's going to take 11.9 years for the message to get back to Homeworld that the ship has been built and launched. So that's about 23.8 years entirely. Uh, so that's what? 23 years, 9 months from September is going to be June, 24 years hence. So that's going to be, what, 72, 3772? So June of 3772, we expect to get a message saying that the relay has been launched. Let's run the clock forward. Okay, well, February 3774. 
Okay, and there goes the ship. Wow, that really moves fast. Um, it's half the speed of light. So it flies out to its new position here. But the relay should be getting close enough that we should pick up the Beta Kaitos colony pretty soon. As it sends a message every 10 years, and the relay immediately relays it back to our colony, which will immediately relay it back to us. We're definitely getting updates from the Beta Kaitos relay but we're not getting updates from Baden Kylos itself. Oh, yep, there we are. The new colony on Beta Kytos 1 has made contact with us. Excellent. So they sent out their report on the 1st of January, 3887. We got it in 3923. So yeah, that's what, 40 years? Yeah, it's 30 years and change. Which is about right, because it's 12 years out to there, it's 23 years out to the colony. I could go on at greater length, but I think that you really understand what the principle here is on how communications work. Orders get sent out to planets, plants execute them, reports come back from planets and uh, spaceships, and your map gets updated based on the reports that you've gotten back. Where information isn't available, the map kind of fills in, interpolates, and makes a best guess at what's happening out there. And that's the information available to the player at playtime. Now, the second reason that I chose to do this demonstration in this older build of STL rather than using the current version is because this demo I'm going to make available to, to everybody who wants to uh, play with it before or while thinking about backing this project. I think that this mechanic is really neat. I think that it's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, this is definitely not a game. It's really a toy. But I think that a lot of people will have a good time just mucking about with it and getting a feel for how light speed communications will work in uh, Slower Than Light if it gets funded. So thank you for watching. I hope that the, you're as excited for uh, Slower Than Light as I am now. And... Do remember to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Kickstarter, and our blog at www.slowerthanlightgame.com. Thank you and good night.